Hi, this is Brad Smith from Beersmith.com. Welcome to my tutorial on how to create a personal equipment profile. One of the first things you really need to do when you start using Beersmith is create an equipment profile that matches your personal brewing equipment. This will make all your numbers match up when you start creating recipes. Start by selecting the Equipment view from the Profiles ribbon. This will display all the equipment profiles. Now we're going to pick one that matches most closely our equipment. In my case, I'm an all-grain brewer, so I'm going to pick a five-gallon all-grain setup. Do a quick copy and then a paste to make a copy of this particular item. Open up one of the copies you just made and edit it. And now here we're going to start actually creating our profile. Type in the name for your personal profile. In my case, I'm going to call it My uh, Equipment. You can enter the brew house efficiency, 72% is a good starting point. The hop utilization factor should really be 100% all the time unless you're brewing batches that are larger than 20 gallons or about over 90, 90 liters. The mash ton volume tells how big your mash ton is. In my case, I have a 5 gallon cooler. The weight you can enter here as well. You can enter the mash ton specific heat, and there's guidelines over here on the left. So, for example, I'm using a plastic uh, cooler for mine, so it would be a 0 0.3 would be a good starting point for this. You can enter the lauder ton dead space, which is basically how much space you have underneath the bottom of the grain bed uh, due to the screen and also uh, losses due to transfer for your lauder ton or mash ton. And, and most people use just a combined mash and lauder ton, but that's what that, uh, that parameter is for. I'm going to put in a quarter of a gallon there. And then if you click on this button here, it allows, to adjust, allows you to adjust the mash volume for the dead space. So, uh, for example, uh, extra water is going to get added. The extra quarter of a gallon here is going to get added to your mash profile to compensate for the dead space under your grains if you check this box. Again, a more feature for more advanced all-grain brewers. Down below that, skipping down here, you can enter the uh, top-up water for your kettle, and that's generally used for, particularly for partial mash brewing, where you might add water after the boil. I generally keep this box checked, which allows me to calculate the boil volume automatically. That'll make sure all the numbers in here balance out properly. You can enter the boil time here. In this case, it's usually 60 or 90 minutes. I'm going to go with a 60-minute boil. Uh, I can estimate how much boil off I have. In my case, I'm going to put a gallon in. Uh, which is about 15% an hour. The cooling shrinkage rate, I generally stick with the uh, recommended amount, which is 4%. And then skipping over here, you've got losses to trub and chiller. This is basically how much uh, is left in the, in the boiler when you move your wort over to the fermenter, when you're getting ready to ferment it. Uh, and also loss to the chiller. Some people have uh, fairly sophisticated chillers that contain some volume. And then there's following t finally top-up water here, uh, which represents how much water you might add after the boil. This is generally done for extract brewers, where you might have a two or three gallon pot that you're brewing in, and then you're going to add several gallons of water here as top-up after you're done with the boil to fill out the fermenter to the full, let's say, five gallon batch size. Uh, the batch size or batch volume is actually the volume of the beer as going into the fermenter. So in this case, I'm going to have five gallons going into the fermenter. I'm going to lose about a half a gallon as fermenter losses, so I'm going to put in 0 0.5 here. That's just an estimate of how much I'm going to lose uh, before the, I actually get the bottling. So some, obviously some, some trub and some liquid remains in the, in the fermenter after I'm done. And that'll give me a final bottling volume of about 4.5 gallons. And then finally down at the bottom I can type in notes if I want. So if I press OK here, I now have a new equipment profile. It's shown as My Equipment. And then the final step we want to take is to actually go up here and click on the Options or Preferences dialog. Go to the main brewing options, which is shown first. And you can type in your own name here uh, if you'd like. That, that's the brewer that's used by default. You can type in the type that you typically use. In my case, I'm an all-grain brewer. And finally, uh, we can set our equipment profile. So if I click on this box here and select the one that I just created, My Equipment, and press OK, that'll be the new default for any recipe I create. So now, if I go back to home and go back to the recipes and add a new recipe, you can see that it has my brewer name that I just typed in, and it also has my equipment set up as the profile. So from here on out, anytime I create a recipe, it'll actually use my equipment and my profile, and all the numbers will balance out for me. 
So that's a very important step and one that's highly recommended for people that are just starting out with Beersmith is uh, take a few minutes, create your own equipment profile, and then adjust it as you, as you learn and grow or as you change your equipment. So thank you for listening to this Beersmith tutorial. If you want to get your own free trial copy of Beersmith, you can go to beersmith.com. And we also have a lot of information about homebrewing there.